Hello and welcome to our conversation on the National Day of Fasting and Prayer. We're going to be talking about the significance and the importance of such a day here in Ghana, which will be uh, observed on Friday, April 8th. I've got some distinguished gentlemen in studio with me, and they're going to join me as we have this conversation. First and foremost, I have the Minister of Agriculture, the Honorable uh, Zothika Mustafa, We've also got to his right, we've got Mr. Roshan Khan, and Mr. Roshan Khan will be speaking on behalf of the uh, Muslim community. I've got to his right as well, we've got um, Pastor Diego Alfonso, and he's going to be speaking on behalf of the Christian community. Over to uh, Minister Mustafa's left, I've got Aditya Prasad, and Aditya, of course, is going to be representing the, in the Hindu community. And to your uh, left, you've got, um, which is my right, We've got Reverend Ronald Magaro, and you're no stranger to television as well. Gentlemen, welcome. Thanks. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. Right. So uh, we begin the conversation by stating the president would have uh, made some sentiments recently, uh, ushering or talking about the importance of the, the day in itself, the National Day of Fasting and Prayer. And he spoke about the fact that it basically unites, we're uniting under one banner, and the banner of one Guyana, and that is the National Day of Fasting and Prayer the importance of the One Guyana Initiative. But let us talk a little bit about this observance in itself, the National Day of Fasting and Prayer. Talk to us about the, the importance and significance of, of such a day. Thank you very much. And let me say I'm very happy to share this program with these d distinguished gentlemen from the religious community. And as you rightly said, that the One Guyana Initiative is important for us as a people. And we are having an uh, occasion where we are having all three major religions, we are having this fasting yeah. that are taking place in various religions. And I think that this is the commonality that we are bringing to this day, mm -hmm. where we can have Guyanese from various religious denominations come together mm -hmm. and worship, come together and fast, come together and pray together to ensure that we build unity we we'll build that one Guyana that the president has been talking about. Yeah. And this is very important for people because in Guyana we have very diverse set of religious denomination. We have the Christian, the Hindus, the Muslim, and other denominations. And when we are having this time, I think for a very long time we did not have an uh, occasion like this, mm -hmm. where we are having religious, um, religious occasion, fasting being done in all three of the major religions, worshiping are done in the evening and throughout the day in all three of the major religions, and we are having prayers being done on a regular basis. Yeah. So this here show the diversity of our country, and this show that it's important that we bring everybody under this one banner mm -hmm. so that we can consolidate and we can unite ourselves as a people yeah. to achieve this one Guyana objective. Yeah. So this is very important from a country's perspective. But from a religious perspective also, it's important for us as a people where we will, have in, uh, we will be having a number of prayer services, where people will be going to this, the Atuchong Convention Center on Friday, where we'll worship together. We will really worship together, and this bring me, brings me to the point mm -hmm. about the diversity of our country. Mm -hmm. Although you might be a Muslim, you might be a Hindu or a Christian, you have this ownership, mm -hmm. this ownership, because when you go out there, I came from Guyana where Pagwa is being celebrated. Mm -hmm. I came from Guyana where Easter is being celebrated. I came from Guyana where Yumanabi or Ido Ada is being celebrated. So you could see the ownership I am talking about as a nation. So you might be from different religious background, but when you come to the ownership of Guyana, that big Guyana divorce as a country yeah. because we have religious occasion where it's, been, it's not only celebrated by the religious, the people belongs to that religion, mm -hmm. but it's celebrating on a national perspective. People look forward for occasion like Pagwa, occasion like Easter, occasion like um, Idu Ada. Yeah. Those are things that we look forward to, that we belong to as a country. Mm -hmm. And that make us very unique, and that make us as a country where we can go move forward as a people to achieve this one Guyana. Yeah, and speaking about one Guyana, I think it's pretty significant the mere fact that we're celebrating, as the observing, like the minister said, that these three um, religious observances are simultaneously. We've got the Lenten period for the Christian, the Christians. We've got Ramadan for Muslims and Navratri as well for for Hindus. That in itself, to me, if you're looking at that, the whole one Guyana umbrella, it shows that we can literally coexist and 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 live 
in a country where everybody respects each other, um, given the fact that everybody have the differences as well. Um, Mr. Khan, I know you were looking to chime in there more. <laughs> well, no, 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 and realize the importance of utilizing this opportunity when all the religious fastings and the religious ethos of elegance and decency and fasting and prayers is predominant mm -hmm. that we could all come together in his thought and his wisdom yeah. for the one Guyana philosophy. Mm -hmm. it's, it is something that moves the soul and moves the heart and we must take cognizance of the fact that in Guyana we have the, we have a mixed nation yeah. ethnically and religiously. We, where we have a mandir, we have a masjid. Yeah. Not too far away is a church and some several churches yeah. and so forth. So this is some of the beautiful thing. I think it's a great opportunity and I call upon the Guyanese people in their churches and their temples and their mosques and their mandirs Whatever you are, even individually, mm -hmm. some of you might not belong to an organization, but you fast and you partake of prayers. Let's all come together yes. and share this love and joy that is the thought and the wisdom of His Excellency President Dr. Irfan Ali. Right. Aditya, I'm coming to you now. Hindus are going through a period of, of Navratri. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about, because we're talking about the National Day of Fasting and Prayer. Talk to us about what happens during this period for Hindus in Navraj when it comes to fasting. All right, so thank you, and of course, um, uh, for, for all our viewers and so on, thank you for, for tuning in and uh, joining in with Minister and, and Haji, um, who would have spoken already. Um, and from the Hindu community, I must say it's very commendable for what we have seen happening. Mm -hmm. um, I was discussing prior, um, this may have been the first of its kind, as, for, for as long as I can remember, my seniors are here who will tell me in their time, but as long as I can remember, and I may even go as far as saying, even in the, in the region, yeah. that this something like this would have happened, where a president, a leader of a nation, has decided that we are going to do something of this sort. And, and we'll discuss that more. But from the, for your question, the Hindus, in Navaratri, Nava means nine, mm. Ratri means nights. So it's really a, a nine night dedicated to the to respect mm -hmm. to um reveration uh, uh, all revering of the female aspect of mm -hmm. our lives and many persons say you know the question why female why male and all of these things in each and every one of us the hindu recognize there there is there is female we call female chromosomes there is male chromosome science mm -hmm. tell you that and so each person is have the has, has that ability um but with Navaratri, what we do is motherhood, sisterhood, yeah. daughters, all of these category in our lives where female play an important role, the nine nights is used to celebrate that, yeah. to remember their input in our lives, to, to know the value of mother, mm -hmm. because we say matri deo bhava, yeah. mother is first teacher. And as, like I said, as Hindus, Sanatan Dharma has always have the concept of fasting tens of thousands of years. Mm -hmm. you know, vrata is called in Sanskrit. Vrata means fasting. You can choose different ways. There are many, many ways of doing it. Yeah. But um, in, this, in this period, Hindus mostly will stay away from any sort of a, you know, food that may consist of uh, what we call tamasic in nature mm -hmm. um, and stick mostly to sattvic. Sattvic means food that is very nutritious, yeah. um, uh, food that is good for your health. And even comparing with other religions or um, side by side, you will see fasting is also for one's health. Yeah. It's not necessarily just a religious thing. Yeah. It's for your own health, your own well-being. And this happened twice a year for the Hindu, Navaratri. Yeah. Now, um, to celebrate the new year and then to move into winter, which will be later on in the year. Awesome. So. You mentioned something that we we're going to touch on that a little bit later on. But also, significantly, it's the Lenten period for the Christian community as well. We're speaking about the one guy in umbrella as the minister about the importance and significance of being able to celebrate or to observe this during a period where Christians are celebrating the Lenten period. But as a country nationally, where everybody can literally put aside the differences and come on one day to be able to take the whole one guy initiative seriously. How important is that for the Christian community for us to be able to do that? 
and I'll, I'll speak to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, indeed, it's very, very important and significant at this time as it relates, especially to this national call for um, prayer as, as a nation. And so from the Christian perspective, we, we don't take this lightly because, um, of course, in our sacred scriptures, like the other sacred scriptures, um, there's lots of um, lot to read and study and meditate about as it relates to um, unity, yeah. you know, and so um, it is something, and so this is the time, incidentally, where we as Christians um, commemorate, appreciate the fact that um, that we were all as humans born in sin and shaped in iniquity, and that God saw it fit in His wisdom to have His only Son um, be sacrificed. Um, shed his blood that we can be redeemed and have a second chance at life and salvation and so forth and of course as we know subsequent to that was the resurrection mm -hmm. and so as a result of that death burial and resurrection we can now as a people one have forgiveness of sins we can have reconciliation we can have unity we can have togetherness mm -hmm. bring that to bear now on us as a nation and I believe that's what the, His Excellency would have had in mind. Mm -hmm. Things like reconciliation and unity and love and respect for each other, regardless of um, religious persuasion or race or anything that is considered um, that could be div divisive. Mm -hmm. But we can come together as a country, a God-fearing nation, with our diverse um, religions yeah. and still acknowledge our creator and so this is really beautiful and we are this is a time for us to be proud yeah. as Guyanese and proud as a religious community definitely it's, it's a beautiful thing indeed when you really think about it and put it into context but speaking of that context we're talking about Guyana as a country where we are now the significance of wondering because we're at a critical juncture in our history as a country oil and gas um we looking to really ramp up um the oil and gas industry um we've recovered from a major flooding last year minister you would have been very instrumental as it relates to that as well but at this point in our history i'm wondering what is the, the significance and the importance of this day at this particular point in our in our history so we heard just now about the commonality and I think um, Pastor McGarr hasn't spoken as yet. Yeah, I'm going to we have heard we have heard the um, commonality: yeah. the Muslim, Hindus, and the Christian, and that's the objective. Because as I said earlier, that the diversity and the idea, and it was mentioned by all who spoke just now, mm -hmm. the idea of bringing people together. That's the most important thing: bringing our people together. And we are not using we are we are this this religious. Uh, tradition that we have had, rich, rich religious tradition that we have had in this country mm -hmm. are important for us as a people to, up, to uphold morality, yeah. to also ensure that we, be, we, we continue with peaceful coexistence amongst our um, nation mm -hmm. and to also to ensure that we bring everyone together for one objective and that one objective is to build our country. Yeah. Because this is our country. And we are the person who are inheriting, inherited or who have inherited this country. It's our job to ensure that we build it. Mm -hmm. And when we build it, we have that commitment to the future generation of our country. We have, we have to strive every single day to work together as a people, to bring, unite people, mm -hmm. to get people to ensure that we um, work together to build this one Guyana. Yeah. We have had all a number of natural resources, just mentioned one, and that is the most attractive one presently. Mm -hmm. But as a government also, we're looking at the other areas mm -hmm. that we are bringing and, and, and can help people to come together. And that is what we are doing as a government almost every single day. You have members of the cabinet going to various parts of the country, yeah. bringing people together, listen to their concern, try to resolve these issues. And, uh, and those are the things that are important for us as a people. Yeah. So this is very, very important. The idea that the president had, and he now is bring, uh, put it into uh, action, is commendable. Mm -hmm. This is tremendous. We have never had a head of state embark on something like this, bringing all the religious body together, the major religion together mm -hmm. and under one banner. And that banner is the one Guyana banner yes. to unite our country and move it forward. Right.
uh, I'm going to bring you in here, uh, Reverend Magara, talking about the One Guy Initiative and the mere fact that it's so important for us to be able to, one, fast and pray if we're going to be able to achieve that. The Lenten period, I spoke to uh, Pastor Alfonso about that a little while ago. But we're talking about fasting. People may be watching us today and they may be saying, well, I don't know how to fast. I don't know what is fasting. Um, how do people fast? How do you fast? Hmm. Well, I fast by denying myself food and drink for a period of time. Depending on the, um, the amount of how, how great is the effort, it could be determined by how many days or weeks that you may want to fast because you're denying your body. And when you deny the body, it gives you greater depth when you go to pray. So that's, that's one of the important things about fasting, the depth that you can reach and the, the sincerity. Because sometimes you can just pray like that. No, but when you fast, it gives you greater depth. And that's what we're looking at. And I think that it has important initiative by the president so that our people we must come together to find common ground to work together. Mm -hmm. And we must understand that the foundation that we lay now will determine how our descendants will exist in the future. Mm -hmm. And if we are really ideal parents, and because parents care about their children, yeah. and you want the very best for them. So if we want the very best for our descendants in the future, then we got to lay a good foundation right now. Yeah. And I think that this um, initiative should really blossom all over again. I think this should, this, this should be a wake-up call, an awakening for our people to realize that we can come together, we can work together, and we can build a nation that in another two or three hundred years from now, our children could look back at this period of time and, you know, and say, well, you know, our ancestors were really a great lot of people because mm -hmm. they have set up this kind of foundation for, for, for them. Yeah. And that they were able to appreciate it and would be glad that they have ancestors like us. Mm. So we must want to become genuine ancestors who really love our descendants and lay in the kind of foundation that will be of great significance. So we are living in a great time. We've we, 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 we been given that opportunity yeah. to do something great. So it might just sound like fasting. For example, when Jesus Christ gave up his body, he was sacrificing his body. Some kind of indemnity has to be paid. Restoration comes through indemnity. Mm -hmm. And because he gave that his body, and all the prophets and saints and martyrs and founders of religion, there are instances of them fasting. Yeah. There are instances of them praying, in, you know, for extended periods, you know, going into the mountains and pray, and you know, that kind of activity. So that as they put that effort into it, we get the kind of results that we are looking for, yeah. and we want the very best for Guyana. I'm sure you want the best yeah. for Ghana. I'm sure all of these gentlemen want the best for Ghana. So we got to put that initiative, that common ground, yeah. right? Now we have basically Muslims here and, and Hindu and Christian, but we in the IRO, we also have the Rastafarians, we have the Baha'is, we have the, the, the spiritualists and the faiths and all these other religions coming together because all of us are all God's children, regardless of what denomination or race or, or whatever or persuasion. Mm -hmm. We're all God's children, and he wants the very best yeah. for us. Right. I'll leave it there. But you mentioned something which is important, which I'm coming back to. You spoke about the importance of fasting and the, the health benefits of it. But I'm getting from everybody that there's a, a commonality here when it comes to fasting, as it's really emptying of yourself. Uh, so to speak, for uh, a common purpose, whatever it is you're praying to, whichever God you're praying to. Um, and I'm wondering, you mentioned health benefits. For those persons or maybe some health fanatics out there and those persons may be um, interested and curious about that, talk to us about what you meant when you spoke with health benefits and fasting. All right, so um, like I said, dating back from when this all began and when it, you know the human civilization would have adopted fasting, of course, they would have had their reasons, and throughout that period, science has always looked at mankind and what they would, what they were doing and what were some of the things that they were engaged in. Fasting being one of them. Um, today we hear the medical practitioners, the doctors, the scientists are telling you about intermittent fasting throughout your year. Mm -hmm. So, for example, um, during during the one month in Ramadan, you do one month, um, but you're being advised now medically to do intermittent and you have an entire year to do it. Mm -hmm. um, there's no there's no much difference. 
um, what the Hindus do as well. Um, for that period, um, when you can, like like Pastor is saying, um, take food away from yourself, even whether it's one meal, two meals, or even, you know, do not eat from X time to Y time, mm -hmm. and then you break a fast or you eat again at a certain period, and the type of food that you eat as well. So rather than putting, from, for, if I speak on behalf of the Hindus, mm -hmm. rather than putting um, heavy stuff during this period, they will choose lighter stuff, more mm -hmm. of fruits, more of pure vegetables, you know, grains, um, roots, tubers alone. So no other um, type of beverages, whether it's alcoholic or meats and these other things. Yeah. So only that. Um, but just nine days is, is, is the period you do it strictly. Yeah. And then you go. But generally, the Hindu home has fasting every single week. So the majority of the Hindu homes, if not all in Guyana, people will fast either two to three days per week. Yeah. Um, which again is part of their health regime. Yeah. Um, not just for prayers, but whether knowingly or unknowingly doing it, it's, it's, it's a health benefit there, yeah. right there and then. And so you keep your body in tune. Um, with with the necessary things that you take in yeah. and how you take out, yeah. so and, that's and that's majorly what is about for us as Hindus. Yeah, and that is that is important as well. But Roshan, I'm coming to you, um, speaking about in Ramadan um, for the Muslims, and of course, given the fact that there's a commonality and a common thread when it comes to fasting, emptying of yourself, I'm wondering, given that, for those persons who are watching us and wondering. Is it the same thing? Is it the similar thing for you as a as a Muslim in terms of what you've heard from from other um, religions as well? The like Holy Quran. Yes, thank you. The Holy Quran um, cries out to humanity. Allah, God Almighty, sent a message to the Prophet. Fasting is prescribed for you, as it was prescribed before thy time. In other words, fasting has been an ongoing thing from the dawn of creation. It is a thing that you can, you're commanded by God to fast and do away those things that are halal, pure, food, drink, water. But I command you, between this time, for us, it's like from 4.30 in the morning to 6, 6 10 at night, you do without food and water or drink or even a desire. Don't want it. Yeah. This is something extraordinary. And what is the purpose? The Quran also went on to say, so that you may achieve taqwa, God-centeredness, God-oneness, one with the universal spiritual being of all humanity. Now, when we fast, we try to be together. It's a white country now. Things are far away. Sometimes families try to be together. Yeah. But at most times, like 90%, to 100% of the population of Guyana will go to the mosque to break their fast and together they will stand in line. Ethnicity to ethnicity, caste to caste, class to class, worshipping together the one true God of all humanity. For the health, health benefits, it, it, it helps you to overcome your cholesterol. It burns out also the animalistic instincts that we imbibe by some of us who consume meats. Mm. It helps to burn that out away. And so you, it helps your diabetic situation. It helps to get rid of all the stuff that are packed in your colon yeah. that you have compressed in there. Toxin. So you're not eating all day, but you are cleansing your body. Yes. You're not eating all day, but you are perspiring all that uh, poisons that has been accumulated in your body. Mm -hmm. Most of all, like I said earlier, it brings us all together, oh, despite ethnicity. Nobody said, listen, um, you're this is ethnicity can be in this line. Yeah. Together, brown, black, white, cream, yellow, all of us in line, worshiping the Lord God and breaking our fast. Yeah, beautiful thing. <laughs> so you were you looking for an opportunity to chime in there. Uh, uh, but I was just looking at the commonality I was seeing again. Yeah. Religion help you help a country population to be more disciplined. Yeah. Although it's, it has its religious benefits yes. that we're looking for. We're looking for, um, as, as, as Haji would have called it, taqwa. We're looking for, we're looking for blessing. Mm -hmm. We're making these sacrifices for our personal gain. For example, the Christian would have fasted almost 40 days, pastor, if I'm correct, 40 mm -hmm. days. The Hindus, nine days, yeah. the Muslim, a month. Yeah. But almost every week, in, the, in, uh, in all three religions, we heard the Hindu talk to us mm -hmm. now about almost every week they fast. Mm -hmm. 
Christian, the Muslim fast is recommended fast every week too. Yeah. So the commonality is there. The commonality is there. It's good for us spiritually. While we try to become, uh, be uh, in, in high spiritual ground, mm -hmm. worship our Creator, get the kind of blessing as much as possible, maximum blessing. But at the same time, it's important for us as a people, mm -hmm. as I am saying. We accept or we accept ownership mm -hmm. to the country's festival, mm -hmm. to the country religious festival. I can go overseas and say I came from Guyana, where Christian is celebrating Easter. I partake in Easter celebration. Yeah. Likewise, the other denomination. So this bring us, uh, brings us together as a people. And this idea, again, I am saying about bringing people together on um, Friday, and this National Day of Prayer and Fasting, is unique for us as a country. Yeah. We are a land of six races, or might be a more. We are a land of many religious denominations, yeah. but we really worshiping under one banner, the banner of one Guyana. We are all the faith worship in harmony, come in unity to ensure that we strive to build this one Guyana. All right. And beautifully put there, just in case you've just tuned in to us, uh, you're listening to the conversation on uh, at the National Day of Fasting and Prayer, talking about the importance and the significance of it. And I've got some gentlemen in the studio with me. Uh, to help me have that conversation. But you mentioned something which I find which is interesting and is what we really should embrace as a country. Um, the mere fact that we're different races, different ethnic groups as we want to call it, religious persuasions, but religion is seen to be a, a tool that is used to bring people together, irrespective of whatever class you're on, uh, race or ethnicity or whatever. The president would have alluded to the fact that uh, it talking about the whole togetherness and you would have alluded to that. How important is it for us as a country, given the mere fact that we're a melting pot here in Guyana um, of ethnic groups and cultures and all that? So how important is it for us to be able to recognize our differences, one, or acknowledge those differences, while at the same time in looking to achieve the whole One Guyana in initiative, putting those differences aside to say, you know what, we want to accomplish this thing and we're going to do it together, putting our differences aside. So as a people, um, that I, as I was saying earlier, as a country, we are a very unique country. Unlike other places where leaders use religion to divide the population, we are very fortunate in Guyana where religion has been used to bring the population together. We heard Pastor McGarrell talk about what, we, our, what our children and their children will be expected of us as the uh, inheritor now. We have an obligation to set the future for our country. Whatever we do now, will impact on the future of our country. Mm -hmm. And all, all of us here, all of us and the uh, and majority of the country's population have an interest to build a one Guyana where our children and their children will be proud of us as their ancestors. Yeah. Right? They will be proud of us because whatever we do now, that will set the trend for the future generation of our country. We, have a, we are a country with enormous wealth. We are a country with a lot of potential. But if we do not use it wisely, then we'll call, we, we can have serious problem. We are very fortunate that we are in a country where the leaders are coming together to unite the people under one banner, bringing all the religious denomination together, bringing all the groups together, and unite us to worship in harmony, worship in unity, and our objective is to build that one guy and at the, sa and at the same time also gain as much, um, uh, as much blessings as much taqwa as, 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 <laughs> yeah. as, as, as uh, Haji mm. Roshan would have said, yeah. we get the blessing from the Lots Almighty. From, from the Almighty. So that is, that is the gist and the whole concept yeah. of, this, of this day. Yeah. Mm. Pastor Alfonso, um, fasting is essential, even if we're talking about emptying of yourself, but the effectiveness of it increases your, in terms of prayer, the effective, effective, effectiveness of your prayer increases with fasting. Yeah. As, a, as a Christian, um, how important is that for us to be able to empty ourselves? As uh, everybody's uh, talking about the whole One Guy initiative and as we're looking to do this on Friday, um, how important is it for us to be able to do that if we're, if we're looking to have effective prayers? Oh, yes, it's, um, fasting is indispensable. Um, it's an indispensable um, asset that goes along with prayer. And I know Reverend McGarrell mentioned it earlier. And so th there's a saying in scriptures in the, in the Holy Bible that as it is in the natural, 
so it is in the spiritual. And so just as in the natural, physically we're cleansed, as Haji was mentioning, mm -hmm. it, it happens simultaneously. you physically being cleansed and simultaneously spiritually being cleansed. Now bring that on, on a broader scale now nationally. Mm -hmm. Imagine our, us as a people coming together in prayer and fasting. Think about our nation being cleansed of all impurities of um, disunity, divisiveness, and every other ill that we would not want to see in our society. <laughs> and we also believe in Christianity as well, that um, what, there's something called the prayer of agreement, where two or there's a scripture that says, where two or three shall agree, yeah. as touching anything, I mean praying Believe about anything, that. believing, having faith about anything, yeah. where two or three shall agree, as touching anything, it shall be done. And in terms of spiritual warfare, if it says that one of us shall put a thousand to flight, and two of us shall send 10,000 fleeing, do the mathematics with the whole nations and everybody yeah. praying and fasting, right? And so yeah. a lot of the battles that we have really is not in the natural, but most of the battles we have as a nation is in the spirit realm. Mm. And so when we pray and when we fast, because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. That is spiritually speaking. Yeah. So fasting and finally, um, prayer and fasting goes together because there's also another scripture in the Holy Bible that says, some things go not out except by prayer and the fasting. Yeah. <laughs> there's some things we may be yeah. praying for as a nation, just praying alone. And like we're getting a battle, we're not seeing any changes. But when you add fasting to it, mm. there's some things that go not out yeah. except by prayer and fasting. His Excellency is on the right track. <laughs> yeah, and therein lies the, the yes. power of fasting, adding mm. fasting and throwing yes. it into that day. So Friday, the entire country, uh, Guy and I'm sure is going to be jumping on that bandwagon and say, you know what? As a country, we're looking to be able to move forward to say we're going to build this one Guyana that we want. You gentlemen put it beautifully just so when you spoke about I'm a young man and you guys are older than me. But we're talking about leaving a legacy for those to, to come exactly. behind. And what a better way to do that than to be able to, you know, put our differences aside and let's really take um, this country to task and really approach God and say, you know what, yeah, we're going to do this thing. So Friday, uh, the 8th. Everybody's coming together. Um, we, we have an interfaith service. It's going to be, um, I see here at the National Park, is it? With National Park? Mm -hmm. National no, no, it's the Arthur Chung Ar Ar Convention, Convention Center. Center. Convention Center. Yeah, if right. I may. So that, that will commence at 3.30 mm -hmm. in the afternoon. It should last till about 5.45. Um, what will happen after that, uh, the, each, each religious group, Mm -hmm. So we'll go to their respective places. The, there is a space that will be provided for the Muslims to break their fast. Um, the Christians and the Hindus each will have their own tents respectively. So if you're of any of the denominations, you will go to that tent right. and then you will partake in whatever is there. Um, of course, the, the invite is from the government of Guyana. So the government of Guyana is taking care of that. Yeah. And they will take care of all the foods and stuff for that day. Um, uh, meals will be served, of course, um, on that day, and for people to break their fast. And they'll be in the respective tents after five forty-five. There'll be recitations of scriptures. There'll be singing. There'll be whatever the the, the groups perform and do um, happening on site yeah. um, till up to about six thirty-seven of that night, or as as long as you want to stay. Yeah. So that that is planned there, and and all of that is well taken care of behind the scenes as we are here um, now. Um, so people are invited. They're welcome to come in. It's it's free. If you don't need a ticket to come in, so yeah. you can come in freely, and and join us there on that day. Um, there will be a formal program where the president will give his remarks um, on a stage, and then all the groups will also be on that same platform. Right. So again, coming together, it's 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 a united um, force there, yeah. and the prayers, of course, will be recited from that stage nationally. Um, it will be live, of course. You you can tune in which part, whichever part of the world, or whichever part of Guyana you're you're in, yeah. to see that on that day. Yeah. So. so for persons who are watching us, we're about to wind down here, and persons may say, "I've never fasted, I've never prayed before." In each of the uh, denominations that are represented here, um, the religions that are represented here, talk to persons about how easy it is for them to be able to just you know say, "What well, I'm going to give up what is water." whether it's meat, alcohol, whatever it is, how easy is it for persons to do that? I would like to say that God Almighty will not make you do something or command something that will endanger your life. Mm. 
God Almighty will only give an instruction and order for things that will benefit and Amen. uplift you. So fasting is easy. It all comes from your mind and your heart. And uh, doing without some food and water will only draw you closer to God and help to enhance your health as well. The greatest men and founders of religions on earth fasted for 40 days. 40 days. Yeah. Even the Messiah who came to save all of mankind, Jesus Christ, he also fasted mm. for 40 days. You got to put your whole heart and soul and mind into this. And so we can get the kind of results that we're looking for. If we want to have great results, we got to make great effort. Yeah. And so I'm happy that we are taking this initiative as, as a country and that we can get the kind of results that we're looking for because this is truly a blessed nation. Yeah. The amount of things that we have got in this nation, I've been to 37 countries and I can tell you that Guyana is truly blessed. Yeah. And if we really love this country, then we will want to put our very best into it and make this country a fantastic place yeah. for everybody to live. I can agree with you more, Aditya. So again, um, I'll, I'll, I'll just reiterate the point of fasting, how easy it is. The Hindus say prayer, in, prayer is the English word, but we say mantra. Mantra means that which purify minds. So it's, it all starts with the mind. Mm -hmm. It's 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 mind more, more than body. Um, once the mind is, is um, you know, pointed in that direction, the body will follow through easily. Mm -hmm. And so the mantras or the prayers must be followed by, during this period, must be followed by the fasting as well mm -hmm. um, to reap the benefits. Our four parents did it. You know, if you're doing it as an individual, um, we are taught that is for your personal gain. Then you can do it as a gao, village, an entire village. And where the leaders of that village will go and say, hey, we're going to do this prayer, whether, whether, no matter what, for the benefit of the village. Today or Friday, as a matter of fact, yeah. we will see a president saying, we will all pray for the benefit of a nation. Yeah. And I think I, I end on that note for this oh, afternoon. Awesome. I'll give you the opportunity quickly and then we wrap up here. <laughs> okay, sure. All right, I'll make it brief. For those persons who have never fasted and they're considering fasting, um, for example, in Christianity, I, I wouldn't take the liberty of speaking for the Muslims and the Hindus, I'm not sure how it goes there. But in Christianity, we have what is called partial fasting. You may not want to, um, it, in any case, it's not even wise, health-wise, to mm -hmm. like embark, for example, oh, I'm going on a 40 days and you start tomorrow because your body has to be prepared. There's certain things you have to do. And um, also we believe the 40 days, it, we don't believe exa exactly that you go on a 40 days total fast mm -hmm. and you could kill yourself like that. So there are different types of fast. You can probably try the water fast where you drink, just drink water alone. That's yeah. one of the options you have. There's some people that start off by maybe missing a meal. Mm -hmm. This week I'll fast, I'll just miss lunch or I'll miss breakfast or I'll miss dinner. Mm -hmm. And so as, as you get acquainted and, and you, you, you get more confident, then you can embark on more longer, meaningful fast. But the most mm -hmm. important thing is the state of the heart when we fast. God knows and He knows our intentions and that's most important. Awesome. Mm -hmm. yes. Right. We're wrapping up here, Minister. Um, for those persons, maybe some persons watching us, uh, you always have skeptics in everything that we do. Some people may say, you know what, this whole one guy and I think we're talking about is not possible. It's not possible for an entire country to fast on the same day and achieve a common goal. What would you say to those doubters and skeptics? Well, we have always have those doubters and naysayers <laughs> in society. And Guyana as a whole, you know that. But we have heard, we have heard from the religious leader. Yeah. We have heard the importance of fasting as a pillar of religion in our country. Those three main religions are these three main religions. Yeah. But I, I was thinking just now also, fasting in religion, you try to achieve something spiritually. Mm -hmm. You try to cleanse your soul. You try to get closer to the Creator. But also over the years we have seen fasting apply by statesmen around the world to achieve a particular objective. And, and many persons would have embarked on fasting. Mm -hmm. You heard, uh, before you heard people go in on hunger strike, yeah. people mm -hmm. fasting yeah. for a certain objective. And, and this brings about the point where you are seeing fasting act as a sacrifice to yeah. attain a, 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 an, ob an, ob an objective, mm -hmm. and that objective. So those, I think that 
that group is the, uh, is getting very very small mm -hmm. that you mentioned just now the naysayers and the doomsayers mm -hmm. i think we are having more people with more positive mindset in our country we are seeing it on a daily basis mm -hmm. where people want to ensure that we have a country that is built on harmony built on unity and a country that is moving towards progress yeah. a country where we will enhance the livelihood of every single person we will take their, their their concern on board and where every single citizen will live in unity live in peace and ensure living a standard of living where the rest of the world will be envy of us yeah indeed uh, well put gentlemen i must thank you for talking to us today and joining in on this conversation as we talk about the importance and the significance of the national day of prayer which will be observed on friday 8th of april all right, so just in case you would have missed the conversation, there'll be lots more for you. Other conversations will be ongoing as we lead up to Friday, April 8th, where we celebrate as a country the National Day of Fasting and Prayer, which is an initiative by the president as we strive to achieve the one Guyana and we can coexist as a country celebrating our differences uh, as a people, but striving to achieve one goal.